All right, y'all. Uh, welcome here to Forest Acres, South Carolina. My name is Alex Ross. You're listening live here on Definite Fiction for game two of the Forest Acres Classic. It's River Bluff and Oceanside Collegian. So we'll run down what we are. My name is Alex Ross. I am a student at the University of South Carolina. I'm a senior graduating in about a month. I do all the play-by-play -play duties for AC Florida and, as you see, Definite Fiction. The main man who runs this account is Jeff Rose. He is actually a lawyer, so he's currently on the job, meaning it's just me. That camera's going to remain stagnant all game, but don't worry. I'm going to call this game kind of radio style. It's going to basically be you guys will have to watch the stream to know what's going on. But obviously you have that beautiful picture right there from all of the equipment we have, so take a look and it's going to be a lot of fun. Well, welcome in from wherever you're from, either if you're from Lexington area for River Bluff and or from Mount Pleasant down in South Carolina. We want to welcome you in to the Midlands today for game two of the Forest Acres Classic and what I think could be the game of the day between River Bluff and Oceanside Collegiate. Both these teams coming off of phenomenal seasons and it's been all about reloading for this next year. River Bluff and Oceanside Collegian both lost a lot. Now Oceanside Collegian has reloaded very well. They are 11-4 on the season. River Bluff 8-6 and six coming into this contest. I mean, and we want to welcome Oceanside Collegian for the first time ever here at the Forest Acres Classic. This is their first appearance ever. River Bluff, not exactly. They've been coming since 2018 and they've won this thing five times. So, <clears throat> we want to welcome you in today. Um, we're going to be streaming every single game on the Forest Acres Classic, so if you guys want to watch the game before, you're going to see your play tomorrow, I think. And I'm about to look it up real quick. I think River Bluff is playing uh, Airport tomorrow, if I'm not mistaken. And then Dorman's playing Oceanside Collegiate. But since probably many people from Mount Pleasant don't know how this thing works, River Bluff, you guys are seasoned vets. You've been here before. Let's bring it around to what the Forest Acres Classic is. Four days, 15 games, two brackets, one winner. So... How this is work? you guys are in bracket B along with Airport and Dorman. These first three days are round robin. You're going to play everyone in your bracket. So River Bluff, you'll play Oceanside Collegiate, Airport, and Dorman. Obviously, it's just going to, and same thing applies. The other side of the bracket is the hosting AC Flora Falcons, Brooklyn Casey, Dutch Fork, and the Miller School all the way from Virginia. So they're going to play round robin for these next three days. And then there's a championship day on Thursday where there's going to be a fifth place game, a third place game, and a first place, or third place and first place game. So obviously, you guys get the idea of what that's going to look like. Um, opening games on the round robin games are going to start at 11. Opening games for championship day start at nine. So, and then championship day when we get to that, I mean, long time away, but when we get to that, there are five inning games. This one will be seven though. Well, again, welcome you guys into the Midlands. My name's Alex Ross. I'm going to be your play-by-play -play answer for all of the Forest Acres Classic. Excuse my raspiness. It's a not exactly, my allergies are not exactly a fan of what's been happening lately. Put some music on the background um, simply just because this is a stream, so we don't want to get monetized in anything. And we don't want to get monetized, so whenever between innings or right now, we're just going to put some monetary free music right now and you're gonna hear my voice, but usually throughout the innings, you're not gonna hear my voice. I'm just gonna mute myself and listen to this music. All right, so, talk a little more about these teams as we get into it, but Oceanside Collegiate, we'll go through the starting lineup real quick. For Oceanside Collegiate and Dutch or, uh, River Bluff, we'll start with the Gators. On the mound today, Dalton Corley at, uh, behind the dish, Colby Reynolds, Bo Hollins, player to watch for everyone who is not aware of that man at first. Walker Godwin at second, Miles Profits holding down the rear at short. Jack Rivers is the other side of the infield at third. Garrett Sanders in left, Stephen Collier in right center, and P.J. Etheridge in right field. For the Land Sharks today, our lineup is as follows. David Ketterman, Ryan Freya, Andrew Palmer, Caden Fergola, Jake DiMartino, Charlie Johnson, Jake Klein, Scott Henry, and Brandon Gilbert. I'll go through that lineup when Oceanside goes into the field. So, let's get this game underway, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, if you missed the first, you missed the first game. Great game between Airport and Dorman, the, one of the top ten teams in the state of South Carolina. Airport won that game by a score of six to two. Now it's game two. It's what's going to be a great contest? David Ketterman, the left-handed batter, will lead it off against the right-handed Dalton Corley. Game two, and we are underway. Corley right down the middle, a little too low though. Ball one, your first pitch time is 158. 
Looking forward to a great Forest Acres Classic. Oceanside Collegiate reloading as always. Ketterman swings through a fastball. It's going to be one and one the count. So also that score bug on the bottom of your screen, I will be controlling all of that. So I'm going to ask that you uh, cut me some slack here because I'm doing play-by-play -play and trying to do my notes as well as work that foul ball by Ketterman. It's now one and two. All right, so as you probably heard, so our scoreboard in right field, which you can kind of see that, is out of commission. So watch that score buck if you want to hear it. Ketterman fouls off the one, two, and stays alive here against Corley. But yeah, so um, I'm going to have count. I'm going to have players on both bases and obviously the score in the inning. I will not keep pitch counts. I'll try to keep that updated as much as it goes. I didn't, wasn't great about it first game just because a lot of hard. It's not exactly the easiest thing in the world. Ketterman takes one outside. It's ball two. So I'm going to try to bring up the, I'm going to go to the Oceanside Collegiate side of Game Changer, and we're going to rock and roll. Good good crowd here for the Land Sharks as they come from Mount Pleasant. River Bluff right around the corner in Lexington. Ketterman gets out of the way of a fastball that just missed out inside. Full count here in the first batter of the game. Working on getting that stream up, but it's a full count here from the right-hander. He'll kick, he'll deal, he'll go, strike three, swinging. Ketterman goes down. Corley has out number one. I will bring up number seven, Ryan Free. Free, the right-handed left fielder. He'll get his first crack today at the right-handed gunslinger Corley. First pitch from Corley, low ball one. Just like the last at-bat, Corley starts it off with the ball. So just so you guys are aware, it's a beautiful day in the Midlands around upper, mid to upper 70s. The only day me threatening for rain is Wednesday, but it looks like it's going to stay in the morning. So as long as we get the tarp out, we'll be all right to play all these four games. All these games are four days as Corley pulls a fastball by the right-handed Freya, and it's one and one. Quickly working Corley. He'll go. Swinging strike two. Free on the backswing hit the catcher Reynolds. Reynolds is all right, though. Now it's one and two go the count. Corley, he's pitched one time last week. He started against Lexington in game one, took the loss. Four innings pitched, two earned runs and three hits for Corley. Now it's one and two, quickly working, breaking ball just outside, ball two. Fans on the River Bluff side wondering where that missed. Missed outside against the right-handed hitter. It's now two and two, if I get my score bug correctly. Count even, coming home, pitch, low and away, ball three, second straight time, it's a full count. Whatever's happening with Oceanside, you, you could talk about how this game goes, but in the end, they're gonna be, they're gonna do a great job of running this count up, and making Corley work for these early outs. Full count, coming home from Corley, swing that ball's hit on the left side of the infield, backhand kick, taken in by Profit, and it will be a single there for free, his first one of the day. Corley. I had to work that full count, couldn't work it full. I couldn't work it to perfection. So we'll bring up the third hole, Andrew Palmer in center. Palmer in center is the ETSU commit. He's a phenomenal hitter. He does it when the pressure's on. Has 12 RBIs for these land sharks. We'll see if the gunslinger on the mound can get him out. First pitch, fastball just outside against the right-hander, ball one. Palmer's got speed, he's got power, he's got patience. This kid has it all for the Land Sharks. Next pitch, Dan, that one's skied in the right field. Etheridge, the 3A region player of the year for, excuse me, Brooklyn Casey makes the play in right, and it's two away. So Palmer skies one to right, that's out number two. Still scoreless in the top of the first, and we'll go to the four hole, the pitcher, Caden Fregola. For goal is going to try to help himself on the mound. The right-hander will be pitching against this Gator squad. However, he'll try to step into the right-handed batter's box and do some work here against number 14 for the Gators. Over at first, Freya gets back pretty easily. It's a pickoff attempt, but not in time. Freya over at first has five stolen bases 
It's going to be one to watch if they decide to go. These land sharks do like to go. That ball hard ground fouled on the left field line. Argola way ahead of that off speed. Argola, one of the best players on the mound for the land sharks. And he's an even better player at the plate. Has nine RBIs for these land sharks. We're trying to push the first run across. Before that, the Corley picks off back to first. On the mound, this is Corley's fifth start of the season. He had three last year and four this year. He averages just about four or three innings of work a game. Goes first pitch, breaking ball, beautiful freezes for goal at strike two. Kind of see the AC floor of Falcons coming in and watching the competition, even though it's on it's on the off side of their region. They could be potentially playing one of these teams in game four. Now pitch, that ball hard, ground over to short, third base, Jack Rivers got it. He'll throw it across the diamond to Bo Hollins, and that is three up, or four up, three down there. And that will extinguish the Land Sharks in the top of the first. It's scoreless, don't go anywhere. Alex Ross here on Definite Fiction got all your action for the Forest Acres Classic and what could be the game of the day. We'll be right back here for the bottom of the second. All right, guys, welcome here to the bottom of the first inning. It's River Bluff up to bat. We'll quickly go through the Oceanside Collegiate lineup. Pitching for the Land Sharks is Caden Fergola behind the dish. Scott Henry at first, Jake Klein second, Brendan Gilbert. Shortstop Charlie Johnson, third, Karsten Hamilton. And left, it's Ryan Free, center fielder Andrew, Andrew Palmer, and right field David Ketterman. Leading off for the Gators is the catcher Colby Reynolds. It's a right-hander on a right-hander here. First pitch from Oceanside in the FAC. That's on down the left bay line. Their ball, Hamilton misplays it. Be a hard turn from Reynolds, and he's going to try to dig for two. No, he stops halfway between the bag. Would have been thrown out by a mile as Gilbert was on the bag ready and waiting. It's probably going to be an error, but a run none the, runner nonetheless for the defending three straight champions. River Bluff Gators, excuse me. Well, that player, if you were around the Midlands, you may know him from a different side. That is B.J. Etheridge. Etheridge played his junior season over at Brooklyn Casey. We'll hear about them later in the contest if you guys want to continue to watch throughout the day. But Etheridge moved over and is now playing his season at the defending 5A state champion River Bluff Gator squad. The left-hander will be the first one for Gola faces tonight with a runner at first. Before he goes, he picks off Reynolds, nobody in time. Reynolds is not one to steal, has not even attempted to stolen base in the past two seasons. But still, an idea to look over. 
Even though, as I just say, Brennan Jackson is at first now. I didn't see him go in. He has two stolen bases. First pitch to Etheridge, low and inside against the left-hander. It's ball one. Etheridge was one of the best players on that Bearcat squad last year. He's maybe potentially gotten better this year as a homer and seven RBIs in the first half of the season. That pitch hard up the middle is going to get through the whole base hit. Gilbert, Reynolds got to stop, or not Reynolds, that's uh, Brennan Jackson will stop at second. And two on, nobody out. Etheridge delivers the goods and gives this guy. And this is one that you don't want to see if you're Oceanside Collegiate. Maybe the best player in the tournament, the 2021 Forest Acres Classic MVP. He was the MVP as a freshman, ladies and gentlemen. This kid committed to South Carolina two years ago, signed with the Gamecocks. Uh, dangerous at the plate is an understatement. Hollins had 19 homers last year. I did not misspeak. He did have 19 horse. First pitch to him. That ball hard up the middle. But he play by Johnson. He gloves it. Now flip the second. Can't contain it. It's Gilbert. Safe everywhere. Hollins is at first. And the Gators have come out swinging on all cylinders. And they blow to the base with nobody out. Hollins is one for one. I'm assuming that's going to be rules a hit. Or uh, maybe it was an error. I'm some, kind of in the middle. We'll see what they rule. But Miles Profit went out a big chance here to bring in some runs for the Gators. Oceanside Collegiate may be one of the best teams in the state. They're in trouble early. That ball's roped into right field. Going back, Ketterman, he's looking up at the warning track. Makes the play. But Colby Reynolds will tag and go to home. B.J. Etheridge goes to third. Sacrifice fly, a long, hard hit for Miles Profit. And that will give the Gators the first run of the game. They lead it one to nothing. Now batting number 16. So for goal, that run is unearned. They're going to call it an error. So that's how Hollins reaches. And I mean, I can barely get these River Bluff hitters out of my mouth before they swing for the fences. Now it's going to be Garrett Sanders up for the Gators, the right-handed hitter, looking to try to bring home another one for the team from Lexington. First pitch from Fergola to him, low and away. Ball one, good eye there from Sanders. Not something you see him taking a pitch. I think Fergola was working on that as well, if I had to be honest. He wanted to try to get him to bite. Now second pitch, low and away, ball two. It's a one nothing contest. River Bluff just scored on a sacrifice fly after the two errors helped load the bases. Oceanside Collegiate yet to record it out here in the bottom of the first. Next pitch to him, grounded over to third. Nice play there from the third baseman, Hamilton. But he's up to hold the ball. Everyone's safe. Throw to first, not in time. I think he kind of got lost. I think he thought it was foul. Hamilton, especially... Played umpire ruled it was fair. So bases are loaded yet again. No outs still here for the Gland Sharks. I mean, they come up from Mount Pleasant. It's not a short drive. They're feeling the effects early. Oh, there is one out, excuse me. There's one out. Uh, sacrifice fly, I'm not thinking. Well, I'll bring up the designated hitter, Max Fr Maddox Free. Maddox is only 7 for 25 to start the year, but he does have power with a homer already. First pitch to him, breaking ball, catches the outside part of the zone, strike one against the right-handed hitter. Regola yet to really find his groove yet. More pitches in relief, the three games he started, he is 0-3. But with how this tournament's scheduled, you have to figure out pitching early, and that's what the Land Sharks are doing. Next pitch to him, that ball, check swing right over the second baseman. Gilbert's got a read on it and will make the play. Hope to drop it. Yo, so they called the infield fly rule umpire smartly. It was a great play by Gilbert if it, if it actually would have worked. So what he did was he tried to drop it on purpose, get the double play. Umpire said, no, 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 that's not how that works. And so he, uh, he uh, called everyone, said, everyone's safe, yada, yada. Out Maddox free. In steps in the center fielder, Stephen Collier. So there's two down, bases still juice for the Gators. That ball softly up the middle, going over is Gilbert. He'll step on the bag and make the play out number three. And if Land Sharks, after a rough start, limit the damage. It's going to be a one nothing lead for the Gators here at the end of one. We'll be right back for the top of the second.
Welcome back here to the Midlands. It's a 1-0 lead here for Herbaleth after they came out swinging in the bottom of the first, but left them loaded. Now Oceanside Collegiate looking to come back and try to relinquish or make them give up the lead. Excuse me. Gilbert still out there. Corley on the mound pitching to Jake D DiMartino for high ball one. Corley righty on righty, pitches one right just low. It's going to be ball one. Oceanside Collegiate, again, I'll talk more about it when I get a chance. I was going to try to talk about it early, but River Bluff uh, skewered those. 1-1 one, one coming, hard hit left center. Going back, Sanders and Coley are at the track, looking up, making the up. Oh my goodness, did he make the catch? He's out. Are you kidding me? Garrett Sanders fell down and made the catch. Martino can't believe it. Oceanside Collegiate thought it hit the fence. I couldn't tell. I was waiting for the umpire's ruling. What a catch. And Garrett Sanders robs Mar DiMartino a potential like a triple. Well, that's a one way to get the first out of the inning. So the right-handed Charlie Johnson will now step in. It's been a very eventful first couple of outs. Johnson watches one go low and outside ball one. Well, both these teams lost a lot of talent last year. A lot of players going to very high-profile schools, the 0-1. Maybe thrown, um, maybe pitch back. I think it's going to be one in one, rather. But both teams lost a lot. For River Bluff, I mean, you lose Thomas Powell to North Greenville. You lose Walker Mitchell to Coastal Carolina. You lose Andrew Vaughn, North Florida. Wyatt McPherson, USC Aiken. Strike in there for strike two on the outside part of the zone. Yeah, excuse my raspiness again. It's a... Uh, not a, not a uh, fun type of season. For Oceanside Collegiate, Tyson Taggers playing at Louisville. Jackson Sobel at Georgia Tech. Breaking ball just misses ball two. Uh, Chase Jarnigan, College of Charleston. Andrew Bowers, Coastal Carolina. Cameron Seba, Coastal Carolina. Dylan Dampier, uh, Smartenburg Methodist. 2-2, two -two, coming home. Hard hit to the right center, right second baseman on the right side. Walker Godwin makes the catch. I can't even talk. I'm trying to go too fast. Two down quickly here. And now in will step in the 7-0 hitter, Jake Klein, the left-handed first baseman. And then Dylan Baker, last first Oceanside Collegiate, Lan that's a USC Lancaster, Lancaster. I mean, that is probably over 10 players from this in this game from last year that would have happened are now gone. Now it's two outs, pulls the bunt back as Klein, and he watches one go by for ball one. I mean, these players, they, they just these teams got decimated, and they're just as good as they might be. Both top 10 in their respective divisions in here in South Carolina. That one's fouled off by Klein, and it goes to one and one. Oceanside Collegiate has eroded a little better. They are dominating teams. Won the last five games with a final by a score of 78 to seven. Ball catches the outside part of the zone against the left-hander, strike two. Klein gave no movement. River Bluff, they've, now they've had a couple of ups and downs. They lost two out of three to Lexington and three of their last four are trying to win this Forest Acres Classic for a fourth straight time as that ball hits the dirt. And it will run the count to two and two. So, but again, as I said, both teams trying to battle back and trying to get some much needed wins here in the, or, well, River Bluff is. Most side collegiate doing just fine in the 2A. But trying to get some wins here in the Forest Acres Classic. And a swinging strike three, high heat. Gets the second strike out of the day for Corley. And the Land Sharks go three up, three down. River Bluff, after coming out guns a blazing, it's only a one nothing lead for them. They'll go to the bottom of the second. They're trying to expand and get some more.
Welcome back here to the Midlands at Falcon Field at AC Floor High School. We're set to begin the bottom of the second inning. River Bluff has eight, nine, and one due up in the bottom of the second. Well, Caden Fergola had a long, interesting first inning. Give up three hits and zero earned runs. River Bluff did get one. That ball sky and shallow right center field coming on. Palmer and Ketterman can't make it there. And a bloop single for Jack Rivers, the right-handed third baseman. River Bluff continues the trend of me not being able to get their names out of my mouth before they swing and get a hit. Well, just as soon as I can say again, I can say a name. He's on first. Bring up the nine hole, Walker Godwin. Godwin, the second baseman for these Gators. He's got a man on first, and they are looking to kind of run this scoreboard up. He's showing bunt. Oceanside Collegiate gets in their spot. That bunt to the right side. Beautiful play for a goal. Has no player other than first. It was a great bunt from Godwin. The sacrifice bunt will move Jack Rivers over to second. And the Gators have another in scoring position. One down here in the bottom of the first. Well, Colby Reynolds, the leadoff hitter for the Gators. I feel like I was just saying his name, but he's right back up. He reached on an air back in the first. It was an error by the third baseman, Carson, ha Carson Hamilton. Misplayed it. And Colby tagged and got the only run of the game so far. For goal, pitching to him first. That breaking ball high in the zone, strike one. So wind, it's been pretty gusty today. Right now it's coming from left to right across the diamond, but it's always been coming in. So be careful when those balls get into the air. Ball is low for ball one, good job by Scott Henry behind the dish to keep it in front of him. I think we saw a little bit right there with Jack Rivers, that ball, that bloop single. God got knocked down by the wind for goal. He's been hit kind of well so far. It's one in one against the right hand catcher. See if the right-hander on the mound can do something with it. Curve ball, hit the left side of the infield. Johnson goes through his legs, and he's gonna get the windmill. Rivers will come around and score the second run of the game. It's gonna be cut off by the first baseman, Jake Klein. Two errors have led now to two River Bluff runs. And it's a two-nothing Oceanside Collegiate lead, or River Bluff lead, excuse me. Oceanside Collegiate not getting out of their way so far. Just air after air after air for the Land Sharks. They're trying to get out of their own way right now. It's just not working. So and we'll come back in BJ Etheridge, the left-handed right fielder. He gave me a little more time to talk about him last time, but after that it was pretty much straight hitting. Etheridge takes one right down Broadway for strike one. The top, bottom of the second, I don't know why it says top of the third, but bottom of the second. 2 nothing River Bluff lead. It's a 1-0 count. And now ball sky in the left field. Free going over to in the foul territory, trying to climb the fence. Can't make the catch. Oh, and two now against Etheridge. Well, Etheridge, he singled back in the first, but the left stranded at third when the, when the Gators left him loaded. Etheridge comes from that winning background with Brooklyn Casey, but he joins now the defending 5A state champions in the state of South Carolina. He's looking for do some more damage. He's committed to Chippewa as that ball gets away from the first baseman Klein, but not far enough to allow a pitch runner for the Gators advance. That's Bre that's uh, Brendan Jackson, Brendan Jackson, who pitch ran back in the first inning. On deck, the ever so dangerous Bo Hollins. Got a big hulking lefty. You don't want to get out with Etheridge here, who's already hard enough to get out himself. That ball, high, hit in the left field. Coming in, Ryan Free, he's gonna have a read on it toward the line, he'll make the play as that ball sliced a little toward the end. Nonetheless, two gone here in the bottom of the second. Now batting number 15, Bo Hollins. And in steps in, one of the best players in this tournament, Bo Hollins. Again, I mean, I can list all Bo's, I mean, all his accolades, but this kid can hit. First pitch to him, high and away, ball one. After a single from Hollins, or the error, rather. For going, what's nothing to do with him, pitches high and away. Hollins already has two homers on the year. Not the pace he was on last year, but he's hitting just as well, if not better. That pick over to first, way, way against Jackson. Holland had 19 homers through the season last year. Had around 12 at this time. 
last season. He only has two so far with 12 REIs. He's not hitting as well, but he's a 472 average, so the kid's still hitting. Next pitch to him, hard hit right to the second baseman on the backhand through the wicket, sir. Over the head, hot shot to Gilbert. He couldn't reel it in. Now it's going to be cut off or going to third. Great pick by Hamilton. It's going to force Jackson to stay. It was a quick hit. And I'm now curious to see what they rule that one because that one was a hard hit. But if it stands, it's the fourth error of the first two innings for the Oceanside Collegiate Land Sharks. Now batting number 22, Miles Profit. I'll see what they ruled out, but right now it's Miles Profit. He has the only technically run batted in, even though it wasn't an RBI Profit. Had a sacrifice fly that brought the first run in. Now to him, first pitch low, ball one. Well, there is another pitch, but that's on me. Profit, he was one of the uh, one of the only players to stay last time, and they ruled out as an error, so Bo Hollins has reached on two errors now. Oh, one and oh, the count, low again, ball two. Profit. Again, I didn't really get a chance to talk about him at all last at bat, but this kid, one of the big contributors, hit 269 last year with two homers and nine RBIs for the state championship River Bluff Gators. Now called time. Third base coach gonna call his hitter over. Profit's gonna go talk to him and gonna leave two on the base. There's two out. It's a 1 0 count. Bottom of the second. River Bluff leads two to nothing after four airs. Now for the Gators, or for the Land Sharks, has led to four, two Gator runs. Nonetheless, Land Oceanside Collegiate got to get out of their own way if they want to beat this River Bluff team. As you can see, they're putting the ball in play, and good things are happening. For goal is not pitching bad on the mound at all. 1-0 the count, coming home, low again. For goal is throwing low, and now it's 3 and nothing. excuse me. All out of sorts this inning. Wind now picking up. It's coming straight in on the diamond. Any ball hit in the air will be tough for the outfield. They're shading him right. 3-0 coming home. Pitch. Got the outside part of the zone against the left-handed hitter. Strike one. The right-hander on the mound trying to get out of the inning. It's 3-1. and one. There is a base open for profit. For goal it comes only. Bounces one home. It's ball four. Bases are juiced. The second straight inning, Ripoff has the bases loaded. Now can they capitalize on it? They, they finished it with a line out and a ground out in the first. Garrett Sanders, we'll see if he can try to revert that luck this time. He reached on first. He, well, he actually did single. But Sanders now the Francis Marion commit trying to add some more to this 2-0 lead. He takes ball one outside. There's no movement yet in the Landshark bullpen. It's a very dangerous spot here. One and oh, the pitch curveball stays high against Sanders. Ball two. One of the things I mentioned earlier in this contest was seeing how these players, again, I mentioned earlier here in the last game, how these teams have to navigate through their pitchers. Right now it's a high, well, ball straddled straight back. Gonna go over everybody. But it's one of these things where I'm curious to see how these teams navigate their pitchers, especially if these games can get a little high scoring early. You've got three more days of games, and you have, th and potentially three more days, and potentially a big game on Thursday to win a championship. One in, one the pitch, high hit to left field. Going back free toward the warning track. He will watch it sail, and it's a grand slam for Garrett Sanders. Touch them all, homer number two, nine RBIs, and the Gators smash this one open. It's gonna be six nothing. Seen a couple hit well today. I thought that was going to be a one that died in the warning track. Sanders said, I'm going to put it home, and the Gators are now pouring it on. Notion Cycle Legion in some massive trouble. Now batting number 11, Maddox Free. So Maddox Free, he lined out to the second baseman, last bat, last at bat. He'll chop this one, but it'll be fouls. It's going to be hit off of him. That was just what you cannot have happen for Fergola. Gators last time left him loaded. This time, they did not. They poured on five in this inning alone and still have more. It is one to note, though, only one of the six runs that have crossed are tagged on Fergola here. 
after all the errors that have happened. Now pitch, slashed over to the right side, right field drifting towards foul. Ketterman going over and climb, but it's gonna get out of fair territory. Over to the Miller School who are sitting down on that right side, right field foul line. Gonna be 0 and 2 the count against the DH Maddox Free. You know, Oceanside Collegiate can score with the best of them. This game is not over by a long shot. But right now, Fergola has to get out of it. Oh, and two. High curveball stays high. Ball one. How you doing, Coach? The voice. The voice. That is uh, Coach Cannon Dorsey who came in front of the stream right there. He's uh, or, uh, Coach Chris Dorsey. We'll talk about uh, uh, Chris. I don't know why I said Cannon. We'll talk later. Out number three. Ground out to the third baseman, Hamilton. I'm all talking about him here right now as the inning ends. I'm going to put some music on in the background. Get them all over this place in this uh, in this inning, but we'll get it rolling. So we got two sponsors here today, both by that man who just you may have saw a glimpse of. First is the Bid Red Box Company. It's a uh, container and dumpster company. They are highly regarded, high customer satisfaction. Everything you think they can do right, they do. Phenomenal company. If you need anything, you need dumpsters, you need containers, you need anything, call up your man. You see that number on the screen, 803-783-6834 at the www.bigredboxdumpstercompany.com. And then, well, there's a team that I actually covered last summer, the Richland 215. This is a summer league team, a Legion team that is free baseball. As he's sitting there, lot, sitting there looking at me right now, I want to say you something. Me Cannon, Dorsey. I know, I know, I changed it. Don't worry, I called you. I, I got the Chris. I don't know why I said Cannon, but yeah, no, this is the Legion team I was talking about. Richland 215. It's if so I know you guys are in Mount Pleasant, and obviously River Bluff doesn't come into this, but if you guys want to sign up. There's a QR code right on your screen. It says free baseball is played at the highest level. That's got some of future South Carolina future commits around the state for college as well as some of the best high school products products this state has to offer so hit that qr code right there and we're gonna have some fun here as now are the sponsor chris dorsey sponsoring with both his companies well one team and one company here in this forest acres classic well i'm sitting there running all over the place but we're now to the top of the third ocean side collegiate got some work to do they're chasing six now it's going to be Eight, nine, and one up for the Land Sharks as the wind now coming in from the behind me. Maybe carrying a ball. I don't know what this wind's doing today. First pitch, though, that ball. Sky foul by the eight hole catching Scott Henry. Well, back out there again for inning number three is Corley. He's looked absolutely outstanding on the mound. Only one hit so far. Pitch outside. Fastball caught the zone. Strike two. Side Collegiate, they have not been in a deficit like this in a long time. They've won, they've won five straight, and that ball inside almost hits the left-handed Henry. Ball one. One and two. Corley will come home. That one in the dirt. Ball two. Nobody on base, even though Colby Reynolds got up quick with it. Henry, five for 17 this season, has four RBIs so far for the Land Sharks. He's trying to start something here in the third, get back a couple of those runs. Next pitch to him, foul down the left field line, curving, foul into the forestry. Long run by Garrett Sanders, who's probably still sky high after his homer. So it's two and two against the catcher, who's putting up a good A-B against Corley. Shy Collegian trying to rally him on. Pitch high, ball three, fill her up. Three, two, nobody out, nobody on base. Top of the third here in this game two of the Forest Acres Classic. Side Collegian trailing six to nothing, looking for a base runner. Pitch inside, ball four. Great AP from Henry, came back from 0 and two to get the walk, and a runner is aboard here in the top of the third, excuse me. Again, excuse my raspiness, it's my voice is starting to maybe dwindle a little bit again. Allergies have not been my friend recently. Well, now it brings up the seven hole, or the nine hole hitter, excuse me, the second baseman is all I was trying to say, Brendan Gilbert. It's a righty on righty matchup here, the second bat batter of the third. Corley will come home, greet him with a fastball that catches the outside part of the zone, strike one. Gilbert is the last batter in this lineup before it turns over to Ketterman up top. Now, first pitch, high hit, foul ball, goes into the forestry. 
So just like the last at bat, it's 0 and 2 here. This time Gilbert at the plate. Gilbert has five hits on the young season so far for the Land Sharks. Looking to get on base any way he can right now. Try to start something here in the third. Oh, and to the pitch. Curve ball hits the dirt. Ball two. Great eye. Or ball one. Great eye. From Gilbert. Is everything starting to go wrong for me over here? But it's all good. Got a lot of games left to go. One, two. Coming home. Gilbert. Low. Strike three looking. He watched and he knew it. Corley has his third strike out of the afternoon. And the first out for the Gators here in the third. Well, back to the top of the order we go. David Ketterman. He was the other strikeout victim for Corley here. Man, still on first. The 6 0 lead to River Bluff after the five spot they had in the bottom of the second. The left handed right fielder going to try to help this team get some back, but have a lot of work to do with a lot of time left. Wind coming in straight in now from center field. First pitch to him. Hard hit right side. Way foul, though. Giving his first base coach a scare. Well, Oceanside Collegiate, the second time through the order. We'll see if it's a little better than the first. Only tallied one hit and a walk in the first go around. Next pitch to him. Swinging strike two. Change up on the outside part of the zone. Ketterman couldn't connect. For the third straight batter, Corley's ahead 0 oh, and 2. Looking to dispose of Ketterman. Go home, hard hit to the first base, Hollins. He'll throw it to second for one. The shortstop, Profit, throws it back to Hollins. He can't hold it, but it's going to be in there. I don't know if Ketterman would have beat that out. It was very close play. Nonetheless, two down here in the top of the third. Now batting number seven, Ryan Free. So Rylan Free will try to get at least a couple more back for Oceanside. There's two down here. Man still on first. And Oceanside down six to nothing if you're just joining us. It's D1 of the Forest Acres Classic picking off Ketterman to no avail. Day one, yeah, three more days after this. Got two more games today, so don't go anywhere. If you want to watch, maybe some good action here across the Midlands. Pickoff attempt, Ketterman doesn't go, doesn't get enough away from him. Ooh, and they're gonna say he got off the base. Holland's got him. Oh my goodness, Ketterman. Kind of losing his mind. I mean, he forgot. I guess he didn't see it. I didn't see if it was a hidden ball trick or not. Nonetheless, I looked down from my scoreboard for half a second, and that will do it. No. Oceanside Collegiate bats three, gets two of them on base, but can't score a run. Six nothing lead for River Bluff, who's gonna look to try to extend this lead as we go to the bottom of the third. Welcome back here to Forest Acres, South Carolina. 
go to the bottom of the third inning. River Bluff up six to nothing here against the Land Sharks, looking to extend this lead while bleeding it off. We seven, eight, nine. First one is Stephen Collier, the left fielder, the center fielder rather. Can't see my own handwriting. First pitch, breaking ball, catches the outside part of the zone against the right-handed hitter, strike one. Well, back in the first inning, Collier ended it with a ground out to the second baseman, and now he swings on a curveball, strike two. Great movement from Fergola. So even though there are six runs there on the board for River Buff, only one has been earned with four errors. For Land Shark, that ball stays inside, ball one. Fergola couldn't get the zone. It was a homer by Garrett Sanders, a grand slam to really slam this game wide open. Now a pitch high to left center field. Palmer going back, looking up. It may be at the track at the wall, and there's another one. Collier has number three on the year. And the Gators looking for four straight Forest Acres Classic Championships continue to hit on all cylinders here. It's now 7 0 for the Gators. I mean, these guys are hitting everything that's thrown in front of them. The defending 5A champions are taking the defending 2A champions out for dinner right now, and they're taking all of it. Well, now brings up Jack Rivers. Ball one out against the right-handed third baseman. I mean, this is just, I mean, it's in, this is insane. It's seven to nothing. What, what I thought was gonna be the game of the day has been dominated by these Gators so far. Ball two goes high there against Rivers. Collegian has some, have some fight, but the Landsharks are need some big offensive strides. They wanna get back into this one. Oh, and two, that ball's high and hit left to left center. Going back is free and Palmer looking up at the warning track and Palmer. Brings it in. Another scare there for Fagola, who now had two. You know his heart had to have dropped when that ball was hit, but a long fly ball for out number one. Oh, Walker Godwin will now get his shot to hit. Walker only has four hits on the year. The sacrifice bunt back in the second. That ball is high, but it's going to go foul over the backstop towards the forestry. River Bluff came in today, losers of again three of their last four. They've looked every bit as dominant as they always have. Now next pitch, fouled right back into the backstop yet again. It's gonna be 0 and 2 here. These Gators continue to just hit, 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 and hit, and hit, and hit. I mean, there's no end to what they've done today. Next pitch, low and away, ball one. Good eye there from Godwin. I, mean, I said hit a lot, but I mean, they just, they're getting on base, and even though Oceanside Collegiate is getting in their own way, they look phenomenal. Now, oh, and two, or one and two, way outside, goes to the backstop. Let's do it, too. Godwin has struck out ten times this year, only two walks. He had two of them in the last game against Lexington. So far, he's 0 for 0 with a sacrifice bunt. 2-2 two, two count. The right-hander deals home. That ball just shot foul. Nice play by the third base coach. Head coach, Mark Bennett. I mean, I could rave about him, and I probably will toward the end of this game, but, I mean, he is defending the 2023 SE Coach of the Year. This guy, I mean, you hear, you see everybody talk about him. He, everyone raves about Coach Bennett. Two and two. Going in, curveball. Hit the bat. Foul ball. Hit the bat. Oh, they're going to say helmet first. Starting to give him the bag it was a hit. They're, so we heard, everyone heard the ting of the bat, and you heard it on here. They're, they're now saying it hit the helmet first and then the bat. So they're going to award Godwin the base. They're going to do what they've done today. They're going to yeah, they're gonna say a hit and, and come and agree. Done a really good job of that today. That's the third time they've had to all come in. For Gola, after a 2 2, was ahead 0 oh, and 2, and now it's 2 2 with one out and one on for the top of this Ruble Bluff order. It never ceases to amaze. I mean, these guys, they're hitting, and they almost no turnover. I mean, you saw number seven in the lineup go deep, and now Colby Reynolds will get up his third plate appearance so far. However, he has reached on two errors, so he's technically 0 for 2 tonight. Pitch to him, hard hit left side. Nice stop by Hamilton. No, I got through. I thought I hit a glove. Instead, I think that one's going to go down as a hit. 
And now the bases are loaded for, or they not loaded, the first and second, excuse me. Yet again for the third trade inning still. And they bring up B.J. Etheridge. So Brennan Jackson coming in to run yet again for Colby Reynolds for the third time. On second is still Walker Godwin, and at the plate, B.J. Etheridge, who had a hard fly out to right field and a set up field last time, and had a single. He was stranded at third back in the first. First pitch to him, low, ball one. Etheridge, it's lefty on righty. No movement in the Oceanside Collegiate bullpen, even being down 7-0. The pitch coming home, just weakly fouled back. Ball hit the ground. And Bo Hollins will come in front of the screen take that ball from him. Whereas on second and first, next pitch to Etheridge. Outside, shit, the strike zone, 0-2 oh goes the count. One and two, excuse me, I missed the ball. I'm losing already and I'm only game two. Coming home, pitch, that ball weakly grounded to the third, Hamilton. That ball hits him, it's off his chest. Everyone's gonna be safe in Hamilton. Another play where he's gotta make that. Had one early in, back in the first inning. And now for the third time in a row, the bases are loaded. I mean, and you got a man you can't put anywhere else. Is Bo Hollins, Oceanside Collegiate head coach, Richie McCullough. Gonna come out and talk to his pitcher. I mean, for Gola, all over the place here for OCA. We're gonna have a quick mound visit. I'm gonna put some music on, and we'll be right back here on Definite Fiction. Seven nothing lead here for the Gators. Mound visit. They're going to keep Fergola out there. And let him pitch to the hulking left handed hitter, Bo Hollins. Hollins, the son of South, the South Carolina legend. Jeez. I don't know what's going on right now, but that's a ball outside 1 and 0. Pitching right to him. 1 0 pitch. Outside again. Ball 2. You've got to wonder if this is on purpose. Hollins leads the team in RBIs, leads the team in average, leads the team in walks. But you don't want to give him a pitch to hit. Next pitch up. Ball smacked into center field. Going back and looking up in another grand slam. Bo Hollins clears the fencing over the fence. How about that one? I mean, this kid. You'll be seeing him play in the Garden and Black next year or maybe even getting drafted. River Bluff has come out firing here in the Forest Acres Classic. And Hollins puts his third one over the fence this year. And it's become a hit parade here for the Gators. Second grand slam of the afternoon. Third home run for River Bluff. And that may do it here for Fergola. Tough outing for him. He got, stuff, he got roughed up early from some errors and then three homers hit on him. And that will do it for him. Not the sight he was expecting to hope for today and not the him you think you usually see. We have pitching change here in the third inning for the Forest Acres Classic. River Bluff up 11-0 here against the defending 2A champions.
new pitcher here for the Land Sharks. It's number going to be number two, Ryan Free. He switches places. He was in left field. He'll come in and put for goal in left. Free, we've seen him at the plate, and now he's going to try to limit this damage. It's 11 nothing Gators here in the bottom of the third. One out following that grand slam from Bo Hollins. Beauty to watch. And it may be time, unfortunately, to make everyone aware of the run rules in South Carolina. The right-hander on the mound deals outside ball one to the four-hole hitter, Miles Profit. As much as I hate to say it, for everyone down to Mount Pleasant, run rules are as followed. 15 through 3, and then 10 through 5. First, first strike now thrown of the day from free. It's now 1-1 one one the count here against the left-handed Profit. Next pitch inside, ball 2. So... River Bluff needs four more to end here in the third. Oceanside Collegiate needs at least two more, so it won't, or at least two runs, so it won't get ended in the fifth. Next pitch, high and outside, ball three. First base is open. And Freeze, first batter, who came in cold. He had no way of warming up from left field. Now next in him, coming in, a lie outside, ball four. And a five-pitch walk from Free. So, man, we saw Homer last time, Garrett Sanders. He put one out back an inning ago, now looking to do the same. He's going to go against the right-handed free. It's righty on righty. Free, this is his 10th appearance of the season, always in relief. He's a 3.5 ERA entering the bump. He throws a first pitch breaking ball across the plate for strike number one. Oh, and one here against the right-handed hitter. Coming home, that pitch sky foul ball right over everybody. Free comes in, usually limits the damage. He's pitched 15 innings this year in the young season for Oceanside Collegiate. Trying to come in, at least get out of the inning, and give their offense a chance to try to get some runs back in the fourth. On deck, if it gets that far, it's the left fielder, Garrett, or well, D.H. Maddox free, excuse me, Garrett Sanders at the plate. I'm already losing my mind. Oh, and two pitch in the dirt. Ball one, runner was going anyway, and it will be a safely stolen base for a profit. And a two in, or a one in two count here for Sanders. Runner in scoring position for Sanders. He already has an RBI today. Coming on that pitch, hard hit right center field. That's going to get down for extra bases. Profit will come around third. He will score. Sanders sliding into second safely. And it's a one out double for Garrett Sanders. So free comes in. For goal is final line tonight. You get two and one thirds innings, eight hits given up, five earned runs, and one walk. Or any hit by pitch as well. That one hit him again. I look up and hit Maddox free. It looked like around the head area. Not good. Like the Gators are gonna have to get the bat around this inning. Runner on first and second, one down here. In the bottom of the third, the winning run for River Bluff is at the plate, Stephen Collier, who started this getting with a homer. Ball low, ball one against the right-handed hitter. The wind coming in now hard, right to left across the diamond. 1-0 coming home to Collier, takes one in the dirt, ball two. Oceanside Collegiate. And this game was supposed to be one of the build games of the tournament. Right now it's been everything River Bluff has wanted and everything they needed to get back on track to where they were last year. A balk by Free. It's going to move both runners to second and third, so two in scoring position. Something you do not see 
I would assume he stepped, you know, moved early or something, or flinched. I'm not exactly sure, but the umpires all called it. Coming home now, the pitch. That one skied. Foul ball. Two and one. Here we go. Free trying to get out of this inning, trying to keep Oceanside Collegiate in the game. Collier can end it right here. Next pitch to him, breaking ball in the dirt, ball three. Now coming home, 3-1 low, ball four, and the bases are loaded. That winning run now at first. There's one out for Jack Rivers. Rivers in his only plate appearance, or two plate appearances, he flew out and he had a double. Or single, rather, excuse me. Jeez, I am not on my A game, I apologize. First pitch to him, fastball outside, ball one. Jack only has now four hits in this season. He takes one right down Broadway, but it's a little low for ball two. I thought that one hit everything it needed to, but it didn't. Now free working quickly, and an umpire calls time. Wynn coming again, right to left, coming in from outfield. Free comes home, the curveball, got him swinging. Wow, that was a big hack from Rivers who couldn't connect. Two and one, we go. Free, er, Rivers wanted to end it right there. He couldn't do it. He was looking for his first homer. Now two and one, coming home. Fastball, right, gets to the outside part of the zone. Strike two against the right-handed hitter. Two and two, one out here against River Bluff. On deck, it's Walker Godwin. Bases are juiced. Coming home free. That ball hit the dirt outside. We're full. Three, two, one out. Bases are loaded. River Bluff has a runner on first. That would end this game in three innings. Gives a long break before our next game. Rivers has four RBIs here tonight. Full count, coming home free. Swinging strike three. Rivers got confused on an off speed. Free got him to swing through one. And that's the first strike out of the game for Oceanside Collegian and the second out of the inning. Now Walker Godwin can end this game here for the Gators of River Bluff. First pitch to him, coming home, swinging strike one, and Free has found his groove. Ball there, it was foul tip, but it was in the glove of Scott Henry, so it's 0 and 1. Free, he's working in a rhythm now, coming home, swinging strike two, Godwin can't catch up to it. Free is one strike away from keeping Ocean Cycle Legion in this game for now. Godwin was hit, and he had a sacrifice, but He's down 0 and 2. That ball lifted in the right center field. Coming over. Going to be Ketterman. Going to make the play. Yes, he did. And a diving attempt. It looked like he was under it. He misread it. It died in the air. And he makes the diving play to end it for out number three. But the damage has been done for the Gators. 12 people come to bat. And they score another big inning. Six come across to score. And the Gators now lead it 12 to nothing. Going to the fourth inning. I'm going to put some music on since, you know, after it was a long couple of innings. And we're going to talk about our sponsors here of today once I get everything off that screen. Here in the top of the fourth. All right, so our first sponsor, done by the same people, Chris Dorsey. Not Ken Dorsey, Chris Dorsey. Chris is the owner of the Big Red Box Dumpster Company. It's a dumpster and a container company up here in the Midlands. If you need anything moved and or done with, like, trash and waste or shipping and containing, I mean, shipping and holding stuff, just... Talk to Chris Dorsey. He's that number on the screen in the Big Red Docks Dumpster Company. Great customers, great reviews, they have great customer satisfaction. They do everything right. Give him a call. And another thing he does right, that Richland 215, that Legion team we have in the Midlands. It's a two, it's a Legion team, which is a, v, a T league held over the summer. It's a free league. That So again, no money. So hit that QR code. Go sign up right now. But free. You guys, some of the best competition in the state. A lot of people like Hodge and McCatherine for River Bluff played in Legion. So, I mean, these, these guys all have fun. Some of the best competition. They A lot of college commits and some of the best still high school players in the league before they go off to college. They play Legion. You should, too. Sign up right now. Well, 
We'll quickly go into the fourth inning. Ocean Cycle Legion needs at least now three runs here to extend this game at least another inning without giving up one. They're chasing 12. Right now, things just have not gone their way. It's going to be two, three, and four for the Clan Sharks. We'll see if they can do it. Still back on the bump. Going to be Dalton Cor Corley. He throws one low and away. Ball one. And the fourth inning is underway here in, in game number two of the Forest Acres Classic. Ryan Free is tr er, trying to gather himself and get some runs across the board after he was on the mound. He had the only hit for the Land Sharks. He's singled, and now he's hit by a pitch right on cue. So he's reached base for the second time tonight. Psych Allegiant needing to get some life, something going here. Maybe that's a spark. And he'll bring up the hulking right-handed center fielder, Andrew Palmer. It's been a very uncharacteristic game. Is there going to be a pitch runner going in? No, they're just going to take... Uh, nope, is there going to be a pitch runner? Yeah, there is. Couldn't tell what's going to go on, but there's going to be a pitch runner there for the Land Sharks. It's, Aust it's Alexander Merritt going over to first. He has three stolen bags this year. Let's see if he tries to steal one right here. Well, in will step in Andrew Palmer. Andrew, one of the biggest and best players for this Collegiate Academy team. 12 RBIs and 444 this year. This kid can flat out hit. He's not, he doesn't swing for the fences. He's very patient. Leads the team with 11 walks. Is that ball one inside? It's a very uncharacteristic game for both sides so far. River Bluff doesn't score that many this year. They haven't really found their stride, only averaging five and a half runs as Andrew Palmer fouls one hard foul on that right side. They only don't really score that much. They only score five and a half runs. Then they, they are really good pitch. They only allow two, like, uh, just over three. Oceanside Collegiate, they scored ten. They only allow two and a half runs per game. On both of the offense and defensive stats for Oceanside Collegiate, River Bluff getting blown out of the water here. 12 nothing. One and one coming home. Fastball low and away. Ball two against Andrew Palmer. Righty on righty here. No movement from that River Bluff bullpen. I mean, not much thing to deal with Corley. He's been dominant so far tonight. Or today, whatever it is. Ball hard hit into center field, but right at Collier. He's going to go back. Well, he misread. It's going to get over his head. Hit the wall. Palmer, that's, that's misread. Only allows free to get a bag. But a hard hit. Looked like it was going to be right at him. Collier just misread it. Going to get down to second. So quickly, there's now first and second. Nobody out. Now coming up to Caden Fergola. Fergola doesn't want you to remember his mound. He wants you to remember this not bad. He's looking to try to expand on this two base runner now for the Land Sharks. Fergola hitting 371 this year. Has nine RBIs. He does trail. Palmer, but he would love to get a couple back here for the Land Sharks and maybe even grab a homer if at all possible. First pitch to him, low, ball one. Great job from Reynolds to get under it, though. Stay on top of that ball and keep everyone there. It's righty on righty. Corey, this is the first time he's allowed two base runners in an inning at the same time, I might add. 1-0, coming home, that pitch, swinging, strike one, curtain change up, got him swinging. Corley, he's not speeding his tempo, even though there's two on, he's very composed on the mound. Now coming home, swinging, strike two. Nice off speed yet again. Gets for goal to swing. Looks like the second baseman, Godwin, playing right behind the bag at second. Everyone else is a normal play depth. They're not really worried about this. I, mean, I wouldn't say about this batter, but I'd say more about positioning on the field. Next pitch coming home. Curveball. Got him looking. Strike three in the lower part of the zone for Cole. I can't believe it. It's strikeout number four for Dalton. The wind really starting to come in now. Here in the Midlands, coming right to left across the diamond. This wind has been howling all day. It's going to howl on Jake DiMartino. They're going to shade him left. That includes the outfield. First pitch to him, curve ball. Catches the outside part of the zone against the right. He strike one. Oceanside, they trail 12 to nothing. There's two on, one out in the top of the fourth. So 0-1 count here against DiMartino. The Land Sharks trying to get some back. 
0-1 coming home. Swinging strike two. Blew a fastball part in the lower fastball by him in the lower part of the zone. And Corley has found his rhythm after two straight base runners to start the inning. He's looking cool and confident. Now time call by the player D Martino at the dish. Wind you can even now maybe even hear coming in hard. Jake this season hit 231. Trying to get at least another RBI to add to his eight. Behind in the count, coming home, curveball, got him frozen, strike three, looking. Corley is back to back days, both looking. And now there's two down in the second, or in the fourth. Charlie Johnson, after two straight base runners for the Land Sharks, don't want to leave two stranded, but Charlie Johnson has the last chance here for the Land Sharks. He lined out to the second baseman back in the fourth. First pitch to him, fastball way outside ball one. It's righty on righty yet again. Corley is calmed down and working through everything that needs to happen. Now next pitch, now outside, catches the part of the zone, strike one. Looked like a nice place pitch there from Corley. It's now one and one here against the six hole hitter. Not a lot of talking here on Cross the Diamond. One in, oh in two, strike two. One in one, it's the outside part of the zone, strike two. Corley is looking to get three straight strikeouts here to end this in inning. Jeez, I cannot talk. Johnson only has, has five strikeouts so far this season. Corey looking to make number six for both of them. Here we go, pitch, curve ball, got him looking, strike three, three straight strikeouts looking to end the two end the two base runner threat. Corley has six strikeouts in the day. Charlie Johnson has three on the or six on the year. And the and the River Bluff Gators are ahead 12 to nothing going to the bottom of the fourth. Excuse me. We'll go now. Come back on definite fiction. Don't go anywhere. So welcome back here to the Midlands. River Bluff needs three more to end it here in the fourth. All that stands between them and that is Ryan Free, who's been took over for relief from Caden Fergola. It's a 12 0 lead here for the Gators. Starting off curveball, ball low. Now there's a dispute over on the third baseline between the Oceanside Collegiate and new coach might add my, my apologies. I got it wrong, apparently. They did not see they got a new coach. So that is completely on me. I was doing all my research last night with no voice. As you can tell, curveball strike one. Now it's one and one. So Coach Reams over there is talking to Coach Bennett. I'm not exactly sure what's going on, but I mean, umpire had to break it up already. That ball's low, ball two. So it's Colby Reynolds, B.J. Etheridge, and Bo Hollins this inning. For Bluff needs those three to come across to end it here. Free throws one inside, strike two. Got him looking. Colby couldn't believe it. 
Down even at two and two. Colby even asked him, said that minute, that get it. Bart just nodded his head. Freya, he'll wind, he'll kick, he'll deal. That ball's hard hit to third. On the backhand, Hamilton. He'll flip it across the first, and he got it. Klein fields it cleanly. One up, one down. Nice play there from Hamilton. So BJ Etheridge comes back to the dish. Etheridge, oh, or one for three tonight. An air, a fly out, and a, f and a single. Free will work quickly here against the lefty. First pitch, hard hit right side, base hit. Etheridge, his second of the night. Well, if you're looking for an impact player, look no further. There's Bo Hollins right there for you. And a moonshot of a homer. That we, we, Jeff talks about that sometimes we hit homers into Columbia because there's like a river behind the field that goes into Columbia. Bo Hollins may have hit a homer into Columbia. And that looks to be a pitch runner over there for River Bluff. It's gonna be, I think it's number 19 for the Gators. And give me one second there to see who. It's uh, Hayden Barker. So Hayden Barker over there, pitch running for Etheridge at first. Bo Hollins there and free. He knows the situation. It's already on lefty here with Hollins. One out, runner at first. The winning run for the Gators is now on deck. First pitch to Hollins, pitch, fastball outside, ball one. After the last at bat, it may be smart enough to give him one across the plate. Now a one, a high hit, up ball sky, but it's not gonna get out. Palmer will come in on it, just short of the warning track, and he'll make the catch. We're out number two, nice pitch in there from Free. Got him to pop out to center, and there's two gone now in the, fit, in the fourth. So Miles Profit, the left-handed shortstop, the last chance River Bluff has in this inning as he swings through a fastball at strike one. Now the 0-1 going to be outside against the lefty. One and one goes to count. Profit. He's had a couple RBIs today, and he skies one now to the outfield. That ball's not going to be as far as Gilbert, the second baseman, will go back. He's going to be caught off by Palmer, the center fielder, who had the long run and makes the play for out number three. So nice pitching from Free after the one-out base runner. Gets two to fly out to Palmer in center. And River Bluff now goes down for the first time without scoring a run in the inning. Oceanside Collegiate will need one run here, or three, excuse me, in the fifth to continue this game longer. River Bluff trying to stop it. Welcome back here to Forest Acres, South Carolina, Oceanside, trailing by 12. Need three runs here to extend this game longer. First up, Jake Klein, the left-handed first baseman, fouls one off. It's 0-1 quickly from Corley. Klein, the Anderson commit. He struck out in his first time going around against Corley. 
He ended the second inning. Now looking, try to revenge that. Takes the ball outside, ball one. Looked like a change up there from Corley. Klein, more known for his pitching on the mound. Only four runs allowed over 10 innings as he foul tips one into the glove. Uh, Reynolds for straight number two. Klein only had seven appearances at the plate coming into the night, or today rather. Now play appearance number nine, fastball outside, stays outside, ball two. It's a 12-0 lead here for the Gators. Oceanside Collegiate trying to extend this game past at least the top of the fifth, but Klein goes down swinging for the second time tonight. And Corley has strikeout number seven. Out number one for Oceanside Collegiate. River Bluff is two away from ending this game here in the fifth. Right now, Scott Henry will try to stop that one from happening. Henry reached on a walk his last time out, but he got picked off at first to end the third. Or no, he got, he got thrown on a piece of fielder's choice, rather, excuse me. Ball one to him. Next pitch swinging, strike one, it's one and one. Corley, setting, dealing, coming home, pitch right down Broadway, strike two. The left-handed catcher just watched it go by, and he's behind one and two. Corley comes home, swinging, strike three, he got him. The breaking ball finds the zone, gets Henry to check his swing, and now there's two gone in the fifth. So last chance hope for Oceanside Collegian is the nine hole hitter. Looks like it's gonna be a new hitter for the Land Shark swinging strike one though against number five. Let me one second here. Looks like number last now ball right just low. Ball one, one and one for Noah Kennedy. Kennedy has five plate appearances this season. Watches one go outside for ball two. Righty on righty here for Corley's trying to end this. He has eight strikeouts so far this evening. Comes home, that ball found on the right side. Oceanside Collegian down to their final strike. Kennedy has one strikeout this summer over five plate, or season over five plate appearances. Two and two, coming home, pitch, Corley, that ball's lined in the center field, Coley are coming on, that's gonna drop for a base hit, and Kennedy has a hit, Oceanside Collegiate not dead yet. So David Ketterman now moves into that last chance hope spot. Two out runner at first, Oceanside Collegiate wants to keep it going, they're gonna need to have uh, man on deck Ryan Free come home. But it all starts with Ketterman right here. Ketterman reached on a fielder's choice back in the third, but he also struck out in the first. First pitch to him, breaking ball, beautiful. From the left hand, from the right handed batter's box right to the middle of the zone for strike one. Over at first, Kennedy has had one stolen base this season. Ketterman lets that curveball stay high. It's now one and one. Corley is trying to finish this game out. Trying to end it in five. Now, Kennedy goes, swing and, a, swing and miss. Or not swing and miss, oh my goodness, I can't talk. Hit and run was in effect. Fouled that one off, and now it again. Oceanside Collegiate down to their final strike here. David Ketterman at the dish. The left-handed center right fielder trying to finish this one. Keep this game playable for the Land Sharks. Coming on, swinging strike three, curveball in the dirt. Drop third strike. Kobe will have to throw it down to first, and the ball game is over. River Bluff take this one by a final of 12 to nothing in five. And only to four innings at the plate, really only three. Three homers tonight by Bo Hollins, Garrett Sanders, and Stephen Collier highlight a 12-run performance from the Gators as the three-time defending Forest Acres Classic champions start their tournament off with a bang. Oceanside Collegiate, not a great showing in the first game between these two schools ever. A tough performance on the mound for Fergola, not a lot of hitting to go around. But the Land Sharks are a very dangerous team that could still make a run in this tournament given the right circumstances. 
So quickly before we head out, I'm going to tell you what's in store for us today and what's in store for us in the rest of the tournament for both of these squads today. After this, don't go anywhere. You may want to watch it because you got a great team from Virginia. You may not have heard of the Miller School of Albemarle. Marl, I think it's Albemarle. They're a very good school. They've been coming here for around since 2017. They are former champions of the Forest Acres Classic as well. They take on the quote-unquote home team in this area, the Dutch Fork Silver Foxes, a team that's been known around the Midlands here for their football and for their baseball teams. So get ready to watch. Hopefully a good matchup. And then, of course, finally today, there is the game between AC Floor, the host team in the Forest Acres Classic, as well as the visiting well, Brooklyn KC Bearcats, even though the Bearcats will be the designated home team tonight. So quickly, let's look into the rest of this schedule. I won't be here for the game tomorrow at Oceanside Collegiate. They will be taking on, I want to say, they're going to be taking on Dorman tomorrow. I'm trying to look that up, but it's just not, not working for me right now. We're going to put some music on in the background real quick. I shouldn't have this already up, but he made it a little quicker than I thought it was going to. And both these teams would have been a very good matchup last year, but yeah. So, River Bluff will play Airport tomorrow, and Dorman will play Oceanside Collegiate. Two should be good games. The two winners of the first game will play, and the two runners up or losers of the first game will play tomorrow from the east side of the bracket. So, very well, that second game between Airport and River Bluff could tell a lot about how this how this bracket's going to go. I mean, don't count chickens before they hash. The, the uh, deciding factor is uh, run differential. Right now, River Bluff has a dominating force of 12, so not ideal. But you never know what can happen in the Forest Acres class. And Oceanside Collegiate will be back in action tomorrow. River Bluff will play at 2. I think Oceanside Collegiate and Dorman open everything up tomorrow. That's going to do it for me. Thank you for joining us. I'll talk to you all later, and I'll see you all hopefully in the next game. Have a good one.